to, to introduce uh, today. Uh, but, you know, it's, uh, it, it, it's an honor to, to really be, be involved with something uh, that's special like this. And, uh, you know, I'll explain the reasons why uh, this, this is, uh, you know, something that uh, I have really wanted to do. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, you can probably see on the screen, uh, on, on my opening screen right here, you know, this is the first time in my life I don't have necessarily a team, um, a basketball team I'm a part of. Uh, the Timberwolves decided to make a change in the middle of the season, and, you know, we, all, we always know, you know, in this game, especially at the professional level, a lot of times at the collegiate level, you're just running the whistle. And uh, and, and you're and you're really just uh, hey, you, you're whenever whenever you know there, there's a change that's made, um, it puts a lot of things in perspective. And I want to show you all right here, just so you, you understand um, my team. This this is my team. This is my my ultimate team. This is my family right here. And uh, that's my wife Haley. Um, I have a, a son who's almost two years old who loves basketball. And then I have a, a newborn baby daughter who's about five weeks old. Um, so that's my team right there. And uh, you know, whatever I talk about today in terms of basketball, in terms of you know the successes I've had, um, it all comes back to uh, you know what God has been able to bless me and, and you know with, with, with these three um, extremely special. So this time has been really special for me. Um, just a little background on myself. Uh, you know, I played at the University of Minnesota in 2000, uh, from 2004 to 2008. Uh, I then became a graduate assistant for a year under Tubby Smith. Uh, somebody I learned a lot from who, who I still speak to uh, a good amount today. I uh, spoke to him yesterday and, uh, you know, he's somebody who, who really helped me at the college level, show me what recruiting was, show me, you know, do, doing the right things, um, understanding that, that at the end of the day you answer to yourself. So you do what you do honestly. And I think a lot of times in recruiting, uh, that's something that you know, some coaches can take a different direction. But he was somebody who always did things the right way. Um, having been a legendary coach working at the University of, University of Kentucky, um, winning a national title, um, you know, I was, I was very fortunate to work under him uh, because he did do things the right way. Um, and then I moved to the Washington Wizard, where I worked there for five years uh, in Washington, D.C., more as a player development coach. Um, I also used, used a number of analytics uh, when, when analytics wasn't really big in, in, in basketball. And I'll speak on that today, um, but I, I believe in numbers. I believe in using numbers uh, to both support your, your argument, support your decisions, but also to uh, maybe question your decision, to question uh, maybe what you're feeling. And then I uh, moved down to the Minnesota Timberwolves where I spent five years as, a, as an assistant coach. Um, and then, uh, and then, uh, was most recently, uh, the head coach there for the last three years. Um, so, you know, it's, uh, it, it, was a, it was a great honor uh, for me to be a head coach, especially at, at the age of 32 years old. Um, you know, a lot of times people ask me, you know, when, when I did take over, you know, you have five players on your team who's old, who are older than you. Um, how do you, you know, how do you make that work? How, how do you feel? And for myself, um, you know, I felt it was all, all about honesty and all about showing showing those individuals, uh, you know, the work that I put into it. Um, and I think that's, that's really important as coaches, what, what, what we show our players, because at the end of the day, players, and I'll be able to tell you, and, and all, all of you great coaches who are there and who are helping help grow in this program, um, they, they would tell you that players can, can see who, who's real, who's not, who understands what, what they're talking about and who doesn't. Uh, right from the start, so that's a, that's a big part of coaching. Um, you know, just just a few a few reasons why uh, you know my, a friend of mine, Laurent Prophet, who I'm sure uh, a number of you are familiar with, um, brought this opportunity to you know get in touch with me now, um, talk about what you all are doing, um, you know, with the OBN Academy, uh, and just just the impact that you guys are making. Uh, Asked me if I'd be interested in speaking to you all. And I said absolutely after after one conversation with Obi, I'm just hearing um, hearing everything that he's about, hearing everything that this, this academy is about, and uh, you know I think that the the, the points that I, I felt were really important that uh, at the grassroots level that, that they have in the U.S. that you all are, are going to be 
be receiving, you all already are receiving, is that this is an opportunity for you all to engage year round. Um, not just with, with coaches, but bettering your, your, yourselves, uh, bettering uh, your knowledge of the game, uh, your, your, your leadership, um, but also uh, for, for the players. Because uh, I'm a big believer, at the end of the day, it's always about the players. Everything should be about the players and, and about the kids. And, uh, you know, it, there's many different experiences at many different levels. And I think having somebody who had played in the NBA, played over, had great success, uh, played overseas, uh, played, uh, you know, at high level, gone through, went through the recruiting process, understands all that, you know, being a, um, you know, and, and, and that's something that's really cool for me to see that he's able to, to establish something like this uh, in an area where, where you all are that maybe he hasn't had something like, like this before. Um, you know, having a high level of instruction and teaching, um, I'm going to try to show, show you know, as much as, uh, as, much as I, I'm, I'm able to today uh, on a number of different, different topics. Um, and then uh, the most, I think the most important thing uh, when it comes to coaching, but more, more importantly when it comes to, you know, doing what you all are doing is uh, leading with the heart and, and having somebody uh, in that leadership position in, in Obina who, who leads with his heart and uh, who wants to better, better the group around him. So that, that's really important for me, and, and that's one of the reasons I'm so excited to, to be speaking with you all. Um, it, it, you know, it, it's 6 a.m. here in Minnesota, so uh, you know, it's, I mean, I'll, I'll explain why it's uh, it's uh, um, that's not that's not that late late in the early, not early that early in the time for me um, in a minute here, but uh, I have no problem getting up early to, to speak to you all. So just a few career reminders. And you know, uh, most of you will, can pr will probably be able to tell by the end of uh, you know what I'm talking about today. I, I want to leave enough time for, for questions. Uh, I, I feel that's the best way to learn uh, in a lot of ways is uh, you know where you all can kind of guide the conversation. But uh, something for myself, and this isn't just in, in talking to you all, but this is in, in how I like to deal with players. Is I like to work in fours. And when I say I like to work in fours, uh, I think that in, in in, in this this day and age, um, one players can retain information um, in fours. I think four is a good solid number. And four four legs to a table, four legs to a chair, four four wheels to a car. You're always moving forward. But then for myself, uh, there, there's four points to the cross, and I always want to make sure to bring that up because uh, that, that's the, the foundation for, for what I believe in, um, not just in coaching but in life. And uh, that's where, where my decision making comes into play. Um, so some career reminders for everyone wanting to take the next step, wanting to continue to grow, grow in their coaching role. Um, coaching is not a destination. Um, so saying, hey, I'm, I'm going to be a head coach in the NBA, that was always a goal for myself. But that, that was never something that I looked at as a, as a, as a des destination. Um, it's a journey. It's a journey to, to becoming the best version of yourself at the end of the day. And uh, there's a number of things that you can do, do to improve that. A number of things that I'm working through right now. I, I have a lot of free time uh, right now, and, and discipline is important. Um, spending time with my family is really important, but the discipline to become better in this time uh, is something that's very important to me. Um, understand that no two, two career paths are identical. So when I say that, is uh, you, you all may be sitting next, next to somebody who is coached at a, at a very high level uh, in Nigeria. And, uh, and you just say, hey, I, I want to I want to follow this path. I want to go that much more. I almost guarantee you that that person's path will not be your path. You may get to where he, he is or she is, but their, their path is not going to be your path. There's always going to be something different. So I think comparison is the thief of joy. So comparing um, too much, uh, that's, that's, that's going to, to detract you. And what's really important, and that's about getting these kids better, uh, both on the court both on, and as well as off the court. Um, understand the rear paths rarely work out the way you want them, the way you plan them to. And uh, I say that as, as I'm, I'm sitting at home, uh, you know, where the Timberwolves are still finishing out their season, I'm not a part of that season. And, uh, you know, for, for me, that's, a, that's tough because that was a, a great job for myself. I thought we were building. Um, you know, we were, we were developing, we were growing a young team, 
and uh, we're going to bet the youngest team in the league for three straight years. And uh, and uh, you know that that takes time and takes patience. And, and unfortunately, pro sports you don't always get that. Um, that at the, end, at the end of the day, coaching is all about relationships and trust. It's less about the X's and O's. So you know, I, I've seen plenty, plenty of coaches or plenty of teams want to throw out 150 different plays um, and not necessarily care about the, the relationships and the trust, um, what, the, what the players are about, understanding what makes them, who they are, uh, you know, thinking that, that you as coaches have more uh, power over wins and losses, more power over how good your team really is um, than you do. Because at the end of the day, if the, if the relationships between both the players uh, but then the relationship between the players and the coaches are strong and there's trust there, your team is going to be a lot better than if you have 150 uh, great offensive sets or 150 great defensive schemes. Coaching improvement. I have doing one more picture of my family. This is my son right here. And, and I don't know how big a screen you guys are working with over there, but, but he, uh, I love this picture because um, he's not even two years old. He's about a year and a half right here. And, he has no idea, you know, he thinks he can shoot a basketball, uh, NBA size regulation basketball and regulation boom. And you see his smile, um, and I love this picture because it, to me it shows, a, a kid who has no idea what's going on, it shows how great the game can be and the type of smile can put on your face. And I say that in the sense of um, basketball is unbelievable. It, it really is. And it's something that you have to respect the game. And uh, respect the game, and, and it can do great things for you. Um, and you know, but at the end of the day, never lose sight. And, and for the kids too, you should never lose sight of uh, of, of, of the fun in the game. And uh, I, I love that because um, over over these, these last two months here, I've been speaking to a number of uh, uh, college. Everything good over here? Yeah. Okay. Uh, your, your presentation. Can you please size like on the one senior text? Yeah, I can, I can try. It's, it's tough because I'm working on a, on a laptop here. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll try. This. Let me see if this works here. Is oh, that yeah, better? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's better? Yeah. Okay, I can't see you guys now, so I'll, I'll just keep talking. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Towards the end, I'll uh, yeah, minimize. You can stop me if you need, if you need to. But, um, so I, I have a. You know, over the last couple of months, I've been working more with kids. Um, I've been getting yeah, five o'clock rolls around, and uh, I get in my car and I just drive. And if I see some kids working out at the park, um, I go, I go, uh, uh, I'll stop and put them do some drills if they want. And uh, you know, I'm not an NBA head coach there. I'm just somebody who, who loves the game and loves him to get get players better. And um, I'll, I'll say that you know, sometimes when I have worked with Parents always, you know, ask me how how can we get the kids better? What should we be focusing on? You know, what you know, how do we get my kid to a Division One, you know, program? All that, and you know, I always make sure to stop them and tell them you shouldn't be thinking about that at ten years old. Um, you should be thinking about having fun and and allowing these kids to 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 grow uh, with their friends. And uh, my best some of my best relationships in life are from my my third grade. Uh, my third grade uh, playground days here in Minnesota where uh, I made friends on the basketball playground. Um, so that's where, where the having fun come, comes into, into play for me. But um, as for coaching improvement, we're always, we should always be learning um, as coaches. And uh, there's always an opportunity to improve in, in, in everything we do. And that's in conversations. Um, that's in, in the most daily of conversations. So utilizing all resources, all experiences. And I, I give everybody here a lot of credit for, you know, wanting to, to get into a room and, and listen to me speak a little bit today. I don't know if you'll learn anything, but, but I'm hoping you can take a few things from this. Um, but using resources, using experiences. Uh, you know, there, there's plenty of free coaching tools on the internet. And, uh, you know, you can, you can look through Twitter, um, look through YouTube, uh, you know, and listen to podcasts. Uh, you know, along with reading books, um, all, all those things, uh, you can pick something up at, every, every day. And, uh, you know, I, I always like to think that once we stop learning as coaches, we stop coaching. Um, there's, there's no coach in, the, in, in any, any level 
Um, NBA, I was just a part of a fraternity where there's only 30 of us in the world. We're 30 head coaches. And there's not one coach there that would tell you he knows everything about the game of basketball. Uh, we, we always want to learn. We always want to continue to learn. Coaching philosophies. Um, when you're establishing, a lot of times, I, I would challenge everybody in the room right now, if you don't have a coaching philosophy, go write that down tonight. And it can be, it can be whatever, your coaching philosophy is just that, it's yours. It's not anybody else's. And, uh, you know, I said it earlier, but you need to be who you are. You know, don't try to be somebody else. Uh, don't try to be, you know, emulate, you know, a, a certain coach just because he's had success. If there's things that you believe in that he does or she does, um, you can take, take those things and, and develop them in, into your, your own coaching philosophy. Um, one of the first things you should do as a coach and when, when establishing a program, and I'm sure a lot of you already have, but identify what your non-negotiables are. And I'll, I'll list mine uh, shortly here, but show what your non-negotiables are. And uh, hold true to those, but also understand that there may be times where you have to, uh, you have to bend on those non-negotiables if, if you're in a position um, that, you know, hey, maybe you're gonna lose a player, or maybe a player is going to leave your program. Um, I would say you stay strong in those non-negotiables, but under, I, th I think it's, it's smart to have a conversation with yourself and say, okay, hey, maybe I will bend a little bit on this non-negotiable, just a little bit though. Um, and uh, you know, everybody handles those things differently. Uh, and then at the end of the day, you're there to, I, I believe that as coaches, we're there to serve our players. It's not the other way around. Um, you know, just because you're, you're, the, you're the person uh, establishing uh, playing time, uh, establishing what they'll be doing, should be doing on the court. Um, that doesn't mean that, that, you know, they're serving you. You should serve them, serve them, make them better, better men, better women, uh, better basketball players. Uh, that's just, that's just a bonus if you can do that. Establishing culture. So culture is a word that's used a lot in, in sports, especially, uh, professional sports. Um, you know, when you establish culture, uh, you need to find what works for your personality. Um, I like I like a culture with structure but freedom, and I say that where uh, I give players enough responsibility and enough freedom, um, you know, as they, as they can handle. Uh, and then at, at the end of the day, it should be um, you know structured where you know you're not late. Structured where they understand that it's about doing the right things. Um, you know, keeping keeping uh, out of trouble away from the court. Um, that's that's the type of structure that I like. But then when it comes to on the court, um, I feel in the NBA players are so talented that uh, you know you you need to allow them freedom, allow them freedom to to use their talents. Um, negative cultures don't always don't try to be negative. And uh, the things the things that that come into play in negative cultures are selfishness, uh, doubt and then a lack of communication. So when you have players who are selfish, when you have coaches who are selfish, whoever it may be, you have you know, general managers, a president, um, athletic director, whatever it is, you have somebody who's selfish, uh, that, that's going to seep into the rest of your group. If you're a group that doubts yourself, you doubt yourself, you, you, you don't have that confidence, you doubt each other, that's going, going to seep into games. Um, if there's a lack of communication, if players don't know what their roles are, if you have never explained to a player what their role is, if you have never talked to a player on what the expectations are for, for him or her away from the court, um, there's going to be um, a gray area. And uh, more times than not, players are going to try to get away with more. We have to remember um, you know, the age groups that we're dealing with. They'll try to get away with more, uh, more than you would ex even expect. And then uh, third, um, you know, Coaching players from the inside out, get to know that, that individual before you get to know them as, as just a basketball player. And uh, you need to live that. that, that's an everyday thing. Living, living your culture, um, people follow. And uh, I, I, I think I'd be safe to assume that everybody here uh, you know, is, is at the top of their um, organization, top of their team as, as a coach um, or even an assistant coach. But it, a culture starts at the top and it moves through your staff and then moves, moves to your team. So establishing the culture that you want, um, extremely, extremely important. So th this is what I was talking about, how 6 a.m. isn't that, er that early. Um, 
you know, if, if anybody gets an opportunity to, to read or, or look at, you know, some notes online, but, um, and I'll, I'll share this presentation uh, with Obina for all of you uh, to take a look at. I would just ask you all to not post this on the internet, use this for your own coaching, um, coaching development. Uh, you know, that, that's the trust that I have in this group. Um, but the 5 a.m. club, okay, so there's a book I read called the 5 a.m. club, and it's a book by Robin Sharma. And uh, just to sum it up, it, it talks about building a world-class morning routine. And he talked about how so many different, uh, so many different uh, high-class, incredibly intelligent, but also just successful, whether it be athletes, whether it be um, uh, scientists, uh, intellectual individuals, they, they did this by creating a, 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 a world-class morning routine at, at, a, at an early age in their careers. And I'm not saying you have to get up at 5 a.m., but um, that, that's my routine. I like to do that before uh, my kids get up. They're just starting to get up. I got a notification now. They're just starting to get up, but, um, but the uh, wife has them. Uh, but building a, a world-class morning routine um, and being up early in the morning to me, um, that allows freedom from distraction, where I can, I can kind of get through the day, get through what I need to do today, the opportunities that I feel I'll have, have to learn today in certain areas. I'm able to plan my day out, able to um, respond to you know, text messages if I need to, um, make a list of who I need to call, uh, make a list of, you know, even to a, to a point of, you know, hey, this is, this is where you know, the time period I think I'll, I'll have you know, to have lunch. Um, in the NBA, uh, that was something that I learned very quickly is that your days are not your own. And uh, I actually used to have uh, my assist, one of my assistants take away my phone for an hour um, each day. And he would, uh, he would hold on to that phone. I told him only come in if my wife calls. And uh, that, that allowed me to, to uh, you know, one, try to better myself. Two, and I did that by working out. I did that by reading. I did that by watching film, I did that by, um, you know, just a num number of things, organizing what I need, needed to speak on. Um, but then, uh, then it also allowed me, you know, freedom from distraction. And uh, Mozart, um, incredible pianist, composer, um, he spoke of the isolation in warnings and, and how that helped him, helped him think clear. Um, so three things that, that I try to do every morning and three things that, that Robin Char Sharma says to do get some form of vigorous exercise um you know just 20 minutes whether that be a run whether that be doing push-ups sit-ups whatever it may be just jump starting your body you have more energy i feel coaching is all about energy so vigorous exercise um try to learn something each morning and it can be something as simple as reading the newspaper you're learning about what's going on in the world and then taking t taking time to reflect um spend time in prayer that's that's my routine uh read a devotional uh, listen to a meditation uh, whatever it may be um just take time to reflect and you know that sets sets for me that sets my, myself up for i feel um successful days and uh this is something that i adapted and i would definitely encourage um hey it can be the 6 a.m club it can be the 7 a.m club the 8 a.m club whatever you want it to be whatever your early morning routine is though um Stick to that uh, because you'll, you'll feel good with, with eliminating those, those distractions. So I'll transition into more, a little bit more of my coaching philosophy. And, and I, say, I say it again, but um, your coaching philosophy is, is not anybody else's except yourselves. So you may agree with some of the things that I, that I believe in. You may disagree. Um, but, you know, let, let these, these uh, points of emphasis um, help steer you towards what your coaching philosophy is. So first off, I believe in coaching the person, not, not the athlete. Um, get to know, know the individual as, as a human being before you, you, want it, you, you expect a lot out of him or her as an athlete. Um, I feel players respond to that type of coaching better. I feel players will always understand that you care about them um, and that, uh, that, that you're going to tell them the truth. And um, you know, something that, that you hear coaches talk about sometimes is that, hey, everybody's going to be treated equally here. Everybody's going to be treated equally. Um, I feel that's, that's something that's very tough in the NBA. So my opening meeting, I always made sure to, to tell everyone that 
Um, not everyone will be, be treated, treated the same, uh, but everyone will be treated fairly. And I say that because um, I, I think that players are so unique, um, kids are so unique, um, developing brains are so unique that if we're treating everybody the same where, where we're, we're coaching you know, this person hard, we're coaching this person hard, that person hard, um, and, or, or vice versa, uh, players are going, going to get lost in the weeds because there might be somebody who may not be able to understand why you're being so hard on them. Um, they may need, need to, may need to be coached um, a little bit softer you know, a little bit, you know, at, at, at a lower um, tone. And, uh, you know, that, that goes into over-communicating. Communicate, you know, find out what, what that player really, uh, what makes him or her tick. Um, and c communicate roles, communicate expectations, over-explain details when, you, when you're coaching. Um, try to leave no gray areas. It's, it's, I believe it's our job as coaches to create um, environments where Decisions that have to be made on the court are black and white, um, even though even though they turn in, into being gray areas. But but you you, you want to make decisions um, in a black and white sense on the basketball court where players know, hey, this is right, this is wrong. Uh, very simple, and this is uh, this is good. You know, this is something that that we don't value with our group. Um, with this generation, uh, I feel less is more. So simplifying, and that's one of the reasons I like to work in fours. Um, less is more, um, teaching with the truth. Uh, at the end of the day, players are always going, they may not, may not always like what, like what you have to say, but they'll always respect it if you, if you teach with the truth. And uh, what I always expect my teams to be, I wanna be the best, condi best conditioned, the hardest working, and the most detailed team. And that goes into coaching. I wanna be the best conditioned coach, and that's not just, just uh, uh, physically, that's mentally. I want to be the hardest working coach, and I want to be the most detailed coach. And then ABC, um, to me, always be coaching. Um, there, there's no opportunities, when, especially when you're around your players, for you to just kind of have a day where, hey, maybe today I'm just going to sit back. You always need to be coaching um, because all, it takes takes you know just one simple moment to lose lose trust from a player. When it comes to basketball philosophy. Um, I'll segue a little more. If you guys all have questions, please write them down. Um, I'll, I'll make sure to allow some time at the end today uh, to talk about those questions, talk on those questions. Um, but basketball philosophy. So my basketball philosophy, I, I want to adapt the style of play to the roster that I have. So that means there, there are things that I believe in, both offensively, things that I believe in defensively. But I, I can't tell you you know, when I go coach my next team, when I get my next head coaching job, you know, whenever that is, that is, you know, next year, or if I decide to sit out next year, you know, take a year off, um, you know, go the following year, um, I can't tell you exactly how my team would, would play. I can tell you the things that I value, and I'll show those in a second here. But um, you need to see, take inventory of what type of roster you have. If you have a team of all small players, that can really fly up and down the floor, that can shoot the basketball, that can dribble, penetrate. Um, I would suggest being a team that, that plays in the open court, a team that, that goes and tries to break down defenses, get in the paint, and kick out for threes. Um, if you have a team with, with a dominant big man, you need to play through that big man, play through that, 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 that girl who, who's, a, who's, a, who's a very good post player. Um, you know, adapting your style of play to your roster. Um, I like to use analytics to support opinions, but also to question opinions. And uh, there's a website. Um, I want everybody to write this down because free website. Okay, cleaningtheglass.com. Okay, cleaningtheglass.com. There's 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 an individual who worked in the NBA, Ben Falk, who does a great job explaining what analytics means in basketball, um, and and how you can use it too with your teams at, at any level. And he provides great stats and great um, insight into into the NBA. Um, as coaches, I feel practice practices. I always tell players practices. Those are for me. Games are for you as players. So if if, if a player if a players aren't prepared for games, that's because I feel I didn't do a good enough job preparing them during the practice. Um, we want them to react. We want them to be creative. We want them to be quick decision makers. Um, and then at the end of the day, again, 
uh, want this want our team to be hardest working team, toughest team, and then I change most detailed to most disciplined team when you're talking about a team. Okay, we want to be be a team that's the most disciplined as well. My non-negotiables. These are these are four things that told players that that will never um, waver on. Always giving maximum effort. That's the number one. Okay, having great enthusiasm for the game. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm big on body language. If, uh, if players are, are uh, pouting, players aren't, you know, they're not always going to agree with you. Um, they're not good teammates. They're not supporting their teammates. Um, that's going to be a problem for me. And that's, that's going to be a guy I don't want on my team. Uh, commitment, uh, being committed, you know, not just to, to the team, not just to, to what you're doing, but being committed to your teammates. Uh, being there to support, um, you know, that, that in the, those individuals off the court. And uh, that means in, in school, hey, you, you might not be the best of friends off the court, but you support. If you see somebody, you know, not doing the right thing or you see somebody, um, you know, may, maybe not treating people right, uh, I feel being a good teammate, being committed to that teammate is, is telling them the truth. Um, so these are things I would tell you, you to, to stress to your players. Um, and then a big one for me is punctuality. Uh, being on time. Um, always tell players, tell teams, tell staffs. There's only two reasons that you're late for something. One, you don't care. Or two, or two, all right, it doesn't matter enough to you. And, and both those reasons all right, are, are, not, uh, are, are not acceptable reasons. Punctuality is big for me. So, so I figured I'd segue into a little bit of offense today. I leave about 10 minutes, um, you know, after this, I'll let you guys ask any questions, but this is for, for myself. I'm just gonna give you kind of my offensive philosophy. All right, so I wanna look for quick strike opportunities. Okay, so that means that, you know, if there's a score, I want our team to take the ball out of the net quick and try to blow the ball off the floor, use kick ahead passes, um, and play in the open court, not necessarily just take quick shots, but, but get out in the open court and uh, see if we can, we can attack a defense before they're set. Um, we see this right here. This is shot, I believe in shot spectrum discipline. So this is points per possession using analytics right here. Um, we want to create rim twos, get to the foul line and create open threes. Those are the highest value shots in basketball. Um, and you can see that kind of on a court. This is, I actually had stickers made um, and we put these all over the practice facility in, uh, on the court in uh, Minnesota. So players knew what were good shots, what maybe were bad shots when it came to points for possession. Um, I want to attack mismatches in the half court. So that means attacking mismatches um, in the ball to a dominant big man if he, if he has a poor defender on him. Um, trying to force a switch using, using uh, slip out screens. Um, Whatever it may be, force miscommunication uh, to attack a mismatch in the half court. Uh, I'd like to use read and react principles. And, you know, so you need to be able to do both of those things. Players need to read, all right, read, read what decision, what uh, uh, the decision may call for and what, what the defense may be giving them. But then they also need their teammate to react. So that means if, if a teammate is getting, uh, getting denied and you're, and you're trying to get him the ball, uh, or get her the ball, that player needs to back cut. They react to the defense. That's what we mean with read and react. Okay. Remember this one. When you talk about offense and basketball, all right, spacing trumps everything. Okay. If you don't run any type of plays, you don't run, run any type of offense. If you have great spacing, you, you will find a way to score the basketball. But it's about having discipline with that spacing. And then lastly, my teams, we want to value paint touches. So when I say we value paint touches, we want the ball to get in the paint. Get in the paint either, either for scores, get in the paint to, to kick out and create open threes. Uh, we want to limit turnovers, okay? Very rarely are you, are you going to have a perfect game with zero turnovers, all right? There's good defenses out there too. Um, but, but, but to try to get a, get a shot every possession, very important for my teams. And then uh, we value offensive rebounds creating extra effort opportunities. If you're a team also that may, maybe you don't have a whole lot of shooting, 
Maybe you're a team that, that has poor shooters. I right, put a value on offensive rebounding and do that. Whatever your values are, and I list all these things right here because in all of our player development and all of uh, my practices, whatever it may be, we use, we, we focus on all of these things in every drill we do. We don't just go out there and do a drill just to do a drill. We will, we will make sure to be poignant exactly on what we need to do. Uh, my dad used to tell me, he used to have a great line. He said, as a coach, if you can't get what you need to get done when it comes to individual work, now practice was about an hour and a half, but individual work in about 45, 50 minutes, that means you're, you're not a very good basketball coach. Because that means one, you can't put, you, you're not pushing your players to the level they need to be pushed. But two, that also means that may, maybe you aren't explaining it to the level you need to explain it for them to understand it. So I'm gonna try to play, I, I got some, uh, I got some film here, okay? So I'm going to try to play, play through these and, and explain to you guys a little bit on um, what each of these are. So this top left left uh, corner right here, all right? So this is just an example of what a rim attempt is, okay? So you see we get in the paint, all right? We have a guy who creates, he doesn't have an opportunity. Okay, number four, Jalen Noel, he doesn't have an opportunity. He gets to the paint, he ends up kicking out. We have great spacing. We have a guy in the corner. All right, guy in the opposite corner, a guy playing off the four-point line. We actually take down a line that's a four-point line to create spacing. So this guy can't help in too much. We have a shooter right here, D'Angelo Russell. Coach, Jared Culver Coach, plays off the seen, catch. We tell I, players, when yes. When I seen the video, yes. you're showing the video when I seen it. You're not seeing it? No, no, I'm not. What's How about this, now? What's this showing your, what's this seeing your slide, your offense slide? It's not showing it? Okay. Yeah. Um, maybe it's okay. a bandwidth issue. Maybe it's too heavy or something. Maybe. Yeah, that, that, that might be it. That might be it. Well, I'll, I'll just I'll just try to try to go off to the next one then. All right, so, so when we're talking about offensive teaching right here, okay, I like to teach in, in whole part whole, okay? And so, so what I mean by that is, uh, is I like to, to put the, the play or put the set out there and then break down that set into maybe what individuals' responsibilities are. Do that in a breakdown station with your players and then uh, move it to, to the hole where, you, where you're putting, putting it into Maybe maybe a, a scrimmage, putting it into um, maybe a, maybe a practice time. Um, I like to teach at the beginning of practices. Work on the breakdown um, in the middle of practices, and then at the end, you use that those plays, you use those principles, and emphasize those. Um, you know, when it comes to scrimmages or comes to live play. Um, when I when we talk about individual work, I'm going to show you guys an example of of what uh, uh, an individual development plan looks like in the NBA. But individual work should be broken down to teach exactly what you do offensively, exactly what you do defensively. Um, when you're when you're going through individual work and trying to improve your players, never go out there without a plan. Always have a plan. Everything should be written down. Okay. So you should you should have that in your pocket. You don't always have to look to it. You don't always have to stick to your plan. But have what you want to work on, and and have it in order. Hey, these are the most important things I want to get through today. Okay, and then you can kind of check those off and then, hey, if you don't get through them, all right, you get through them tomorrow. Um, as coaches, whatever we let go, that's what your team will, will become. So I say that where if you're somebody who's letting, uh, you know, letting players make, uh, you know, poor decisions in the open court, turn the ball over, players throw it behind their back, um, players... Uh, you know, just do kind of whatever they want. That's how your team is going to play in games. That's how, and, that, and that's what that individual is going to be as a player. Um, once the players can explain it, they, they understand it. So there were, there were a lot of times where I would, I would have a player explain what he was supposed to be doing defensively and teach a drill to his teammates um, so that he, uh, he, he, he could then hear himself, and, and, and if I if I could tell, hey, he, he's explaining it perfectly, that means that he understands it. And all players learn differently. Some players learn 
where all they need to do is see it once, see it on the court. Some players need to walk through it. Some players might be able to look at a diagram, like a diagram I have to the right here, okay? Some players, some players may be able to just look at the diagram and, and, uh, and understand what they're supposed to do. So this right here, Cyclone is a, is a and I don't think this video will play. Was that video playing? No, no, okay, yeah. Uh, I think you need to click on uh, please share this instead. Because if you don't present it, so if you need to present something else, you need to click on share this instead. That's what they want to share it now. Uh, I think you need to click on more familiar with the Google Meet by yourself, but I think you need to click on share this instead. Come on, explain. Yeah, whatever you're yeah. sharing, whatever you're sharing, then you need to click show that you're sharing that particular uh, document piece or the one that you're presenting presently, which is just your slide. So I think that's what you need to do because you're really Google Meets. Obviously everything is open. I believe everything is open on your, on your yeah. website, right? Yeah, I, I don't I don't I don't think uh, I'll just I'll just go go with this. I'll just show you guys off, off the screen well, here. Stop presenting okay. this and present the video instead. The video is embedded in the presentation right here. So, um, but right here. So when we talk about whole part whole, okay. So so this is a play, play we ran called Cyclone. All right. What it looks like is this player right here. He's setting a back screen, okay. As a player is coming up here to set this ball screen, okay. He's setting this back screen. The player who's setting the ball screen then rolls down and screens for him, bringing him to the top of the key for a three. So we would teach that. Where we teach it off video, we would teach it off, off of maybe, uh, maybe um, uh, just off, off of players walking through early in practice. Then the middle of practice, we would go through a breakdown where players would be getting shots. They just work on the back screen, and then they work on this cone would then be your screener. Work on then getting a shot at the top of the key. And then at the end of practice, we put the whole together. Okay, so we focus on, we had focus on the screen. We can also put a player right here. We focus on the screen, we focus on the footwork. We focus on the type of pass that a player should make. Um, all those little things. And then we, then we would go through it um, when we talk about uh, uh, during the game, during the scrimmages. So th this right here, okay, so this is, this is individual development in the NBA. So this was last summer, this little, little box you have to the left, okay? little box you have to the left is uh is points of emphasis okay you have a, you have week one we, yes it hasn't okay yeah Can you get a question? Yeah, why, why, why don't you just repeat it for me yeah, then, Obina? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't really hear yeah, it right. So you, yeah. you're asking in, in trying to help your, your players develop, uh, at what point um, you, should you feel like you're, you're pushing the coach, the players too hard or too far? Uh, at what point? Yeah. What, what are the yeah. indices that help yeah. you determine that? No, no that, that's, a that's a really healthy question. Um, uh, yeah, you know, it. it it starts out. That's why. That's why I talk about getting to know the player, um, the person before you get to know the player. Um, you know, trust goes both ways. So, you know, we always talk about as coaches, we need to trust the players. Um, they need to trust us, and uh, trust that we're going to put them in positions to succeed. So, you, you know, I think that explaining to the players early on, hey, I'm going to push you. Um, you know, I always believe in for myself, workouts are an hour or less. And I say that because we're going to go hard for an hour. Um, I don't believe in, in just getting on the court for three hours um, and just doing things to do them. I believe in, in really focused, detailed work. But then also players, um, if, if a player is feeling, hey, you know, my legs are heavy or, or hey, I'm, I'm not, you know, I, I just don't have it. Um, as a coach, if, there's, if that trust is there, um, they, they need to be able to trust you that you'll say, okay, I'll pull back a little bit. But also on the other end, 
as coaches, you need to trust that the players aren't just going to say, "Hey, I'm, I'm you know, I, I'm not feeling good today," um, just so they don't, they don't, because <laughs> they don't want to work. Um, so I think it's a, it's a balance. It's about getting to know, know those players. In the NBA, we have trackers to measure, you know, how much, how much they've run. I understand that not everybody has those resources. So it was a lot easier for me to see the type of, of, of workload that they were taking on because I actually saw numbers um, on, on what they could, what they were doing in practice. Um, but, but to me, it's all about that, that communication, that trust, um, you know, when, when you're trying to see how far you can push your players. Can you can you can you a little a little bit? Can you yeah, repeat, so Obina? He, he's asking what are the tips you have for 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 players um, or coaches to be able to get the team re-energized after especially after games. Um, we obviously the NBA schedule is a lot more intense than most of the other you know the high school coach they played. But what what yeah. do they want to do after games to get the kid, to get the kids refocused yeah. and all that the players? Yeah, yeah, no, that's a great question and. Um, I'll speak from the coaching side of things right now. Um, after games, I always, I never wanted to speak more than 30 seconds to the team. And I, I didn't want to speak out of, an, out of an emotional place. So I didn't want to be too high, I didn't want to be too low. Everything was always very, you know, I get in the locker room and there were some where I would just say, hey, everybody up 11 o'clock tomorrow. And that was after a win, that was after a loss. But that was more, more just to you know, because because I want to be able to look at the film. I want to be able to understand, um, you know, what I should be speaking on uh, before I spoke out of emotion. You know, after after a loss, for example. Um, but I also felt players players' attention span um, during that time. You know, hey, they they were ready to get in the shower. They're ready to eat. They're ready to, to get done with media. Go home. Um, they got back to back. Sometimes they're flying. Um, you know, hey, we need to get them out. And uh, you know, so I think that helped the players. Re refocus, re-energize. And then um, the next day, we would always watch, I always limited it to 20 clips. Okay, so 20 clips of film, that kind of re-energize, make them good clips, make them bad clips, clips that these, these pl the players can improve upon. But then also, um, understanding what your players may need during that practice. Um, you know, do they need to have, start the day out with a shooting game, get them out there um, shooting against each other. All right, go in teams. Okay, hey, we're gonna, you know, white teams over here, blue teams over here. You know, first spots from the right corner. We're shooting threes. First team to make ten, go. So sometimes you need to you need to find a way to trick your trick yourself, trick your teams into that enthusiasm. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And and hopefully, hopefully you guys are all able to uh, take a look at this presentation I'll send over this afternoon. Um, but you know, it, it's I can't tell you that this is the best offense. This is this is the worst offense to run. It's just the offense that that based off the players that you have. Um, I feel that there are principles that are important. Um, I feel um, the things that you can always always tell about players uh, tell. You know, every every good team, they're, they they limit their turnovers. Uh, they take good shots, and they're a high assist basketball team. And so, if, if they if they do that, that that means they have a great they have a great offense. More times than not. Now, 
you know, sometimes that means you're playing out of an open alignment. You're playing five out. Sometimes that means you're a heavy drill, drill penetration team. Um, that can also mean, you know, you're a team that throw, if you have a dominant post player, like I said, you're throwing the ball to that post player um, and you're playing through him, playing through her. Uh, you know, so I can't tell you what the best offense is. I can just tell you um, principles and low, low, low turnover, high assist, and, and a, team, a team that shares the basketball. Um, those, those are the best teams. It's a great question, and that, that's why I say list your, list your non-negotiables early. Um, I had a player, um, one of my better players, who, uh, you know, he was late. He, he did some things early in the year. Um, I decided not to start him one game. Um, that, that ends up, that can end up hurting you because I'm not, I'm not coaching the NBA team right now. So you need to you need to you need to know what your non-negotiables are and what you're what you're able to live with. Um, and for me, you know, those things are important to me. So for that reason, I uh, I, I held true to what I believed in. Um, but also understand that you know if, if you're if you're going to you know maybe suspend a player, if you're going to uh, you know discipline a player, hey, he or she may may uh, completely, you know, not want to be a part of your team. But you need to think about, okay, is that player, you know, do we want them a part of this group? Are they helping this group? And I, I do think at the end, um, you know, if you're able to discipline a player, the players who, who want to be great, those are the players that want to be coached. Any, any great player, he would tell, he would tell you, he, if he just wants to do everything he wants to do, all right, then he's not going to become a great player. Just, just, be, just because that, that's just the bottom line. Great players want to be coached. I would, I would stress that to your player, um, and then tell him, hey, I, there are plenty of times that I've, I've had, I've, you know, told players, so I can coach, you know, I can coach Kevin Garnett, but I can't coach you. You know, put, put, in, put in perspective, um, you know, because you, you're never going to take the next step if you're just able to do whatever you want. Sorry. Uh, uh, two more questions. Okay, 
Yeah, yeah. Shot spectrum discipline. So when we talk when I talk about shot spectrum discipline in the NBA especially, so the points per possession, um, that that's a that's a number that explains what what shots are good shots, what shots maybe maybe aren't good shots. So what that means is if you take if, if let's say Obina, let's say I'm I'm playing against your team and your team shoots uh, your team shoots and you guys make um, you guys make 10 mid-range two-point shots yeah. but that's all you take you don't take any you don't take any threes yeah. okay so 10 two-point shots all right you know that that's going that's going to equate to 20 points okay me I have 10 possessions okay I have 10 possessions and I'm take let's say I take all threes and I end up making you know um, I am I have 10, 10 possessions and I Let's say I, I make whatever, seven, uh, um, seven. seven threes, yeah. seven threes, eight threes, yeah. okay? I made less shots than you, okay? I made less shots than you. I, I scored more points than you because I took high efficiency shots. I took shots that, that led to a higher points per possession. So that means, you know, 21, that means 24. That leads me to, you know, the fact that we're having we have the same amount of possessions. I just took more efficient shots. So I'm not telling you all just get out there and just shoot a lot of threes, but in, in the mid range, those are shots that are highly contested in the NBA. That's one of the reasons you see so many teams not shooting a whole lot of those anymore. Okay, we're stressing getting to the free throw line. Those are very high efficiency shots. Getting to the rim, those are high efficiency shots because a layup should be one of the easier, play, easier shots to finish. And then also threes. Because that, that eliminates some of that uh, some of that gap when it comes to you know mid range shots versus three point shots. Uh, so it, it's something that you know you guys probably don't have have the uh, the type of, of stats that that we're allowed in the NBA. We're very fortunate. You know we have people watching everything. Um, but you know I, I would stress here here's what I would stress. I would stress have your tell your team get to the foul line. Those are the highest efficiency shots at any level. If you can get to the foul line by attacking the rim, all right, you're going to you're going, going to be able to put a lot more points up on the board. Thank you, coach. I wish I played this day and age today. You know, we was big men. It's can't get tested. Go in the paint. Go in the paint. Don't shoot any. Show any uh, now. <laughs> I wish I played today. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question, and and uh, I I agree. I, I feel you know technology, and I use an iPad. I, I was one of the first coaches to use an iPad on the bench in the NBA, and I did that because I feel players learn better off screens now. 
um, whether we like it or not. You know, I, I, hey, I'm more comfortable using a whiteboard, but I felt players are so used to their phone, they're so used to playing video games, doing all those things, that them um, learning off screens was was better. And uh, I'll, I'm going to put together a list, Obina, and I'm going to send it to you right after this of, of um, some applications yeah. and then um, also some contact info. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll send you, it's called Lucio Sports. Okay. It's the, that's the iPad application that I used on the bench okay. um, to draw up my plays. And then, uh, you know, hey, get on Twitter. There's a lot of great coaches on Twitter who, who put, out their, put out great, uh, you know, motivation, put out great, great uh, techniques. Um, and then I, I, I would also I would also say, uh, you know, those websites with analytics um, and fast draw. If you if, if you need to play diagramming software, um, and it, it isn't terribly expensive either, um, but fast draw from Fast Model, um, you can create you know great looking diagrams, very clear, very clean, um, and and you know they're a great teaching tool for players. Uh, if you can if you're able to get that. Um, you know, that, that would really help. Okay. Coach, I want to say a really big thank you to you uh, for making Absolutely. this time. We, we only had you for now, but you've given us another extra 15 minutes. So thank you so much. I really appreciate this. Yeah, I don't want to give you much. Thank you all. Best of luck moving forward. So coach, uh, thank you so much. Please uh, send me those information. And for the, for the coaches, I don't want you guys to register your emails and stuff, we're going to share this information with you continuously. This is the first of our seminar, we're going to be doing this on a monthly basis. So we're going to have great coaches like Coach Ransons coming up and talking talk to us about, you know, everything about basketball, whether it's coaching and just, you know, I don't know, just like you said, we, we keep learning every, every day, we keep learning every day to improve. So Coach, thank you so much. Say hello to the family, to the new baby, just like new baby. Absolutely. <laughs> You all keep healthy, keep safe. Thank you very much. Be good. Thank you. <laughs> so, guys, thank you very much. Uh, I, I know this, this is something that we want to start at a level, but you know, right in Nigeria. So, like I said, the character is always an important thing, but even me, I was struggling to get some things done. But uh, I don't know, how many of you have seen the OBN website?
most of us in this room have done our own big big fun to play with. Right? We have done what we can do for playing with. The rest of our lives, what do we want to, what do we want to contribute to the game? And the, the only way to make a huge impact is by engaging these children at a young age. We all know the issues. Because we don't have the infrastructure, what they tell is when the players are big go travel the ball, when they, when they get a chance, they are too old. We start doing things like moving back eggs and stuff like that. These things are things that destroy people's lives. But when you start forging passports, do all those kind of shitty things, you're destroying your life. You can't correct all of these things going forward. So we, the reason why we build this place and this program is to start these kids from a young age. And the way we want to do this is partnership with the schools. That's why I'm happy to have schools like Lagos Prep, Atlantic Hall, Corona, um, what do you know your school? Yeah? So, so for all the schools here, you're here, and you all know the challenges that you're faced. Um, basketball and sports has been eliminated, or I say eliminated from our school program. What I say eliminated means that it hasn't been given enough priority of where it needs to be. And Nigeria, give you some numbers. Nigeria is told that made up of 200 million people. You know Nigeria has 200 million people, right? Out of that 200 million people, over 65% of them I live below the age of 20, 20, 20 years old. Do you understand those kind of numbers? How are we going to engage these young people? A lot of us want to be engineers. Huh? A lot of us want to be doctors. A lot of us are going to be uh, bankers. How many jobs can these industries actually create? Then maybe God will be a lot of enough and we're not going to do all that sport. But the one we know is what we're going to do first, right? So. The goal I have here today is to engage, what I call engagement. Engaging you guys, you guys know who we are, we know get to know who you are. Because there are several programs we want to run. And I tell you all the time, one thing that's most important for any development of any player, whether it's male or female, is that we must have all year round developmental programs. What does that mean? It means that a child that wants to play basketball should be able to play, have a high school league, a secondary school league, where they're playing it. At least those start from secondary school. There must be a league that is consistent and sustainable every year with the top schools in the area. We have to establish that. It's not about question whether it's going to happen, whether or not we know exactly the dates that we are playing the games. We have the schedule, we have all the marketing, everything, the jersey, the team, the coaching, everything is ready. People are preparing for the season every year. No questions asked, they know. When I was playing high school basketball in America, there was no question when the season was going to start. We knew exactly that August 8th, when we come back from summer, we're going to training camp. Once we resume school, we're going to training. While we're doing classes, after class, we're going to run. We're going to lift weights. We're preparing for the season that starting October 15th. Everybody had a kind of March Madness. Yeah. You know, March Madness. Yeah. It was a date. Nobody, nobody, everybody knew that date was coming. So you start preparing in September, early September, late October, early October. Matter of fact, the summer time, you are preparing for that season. So summer, you are playing summer league. You are playing AAU. You, know, you guys know what AAU is. I'm a child junior. You have teams that we play. I'm playing about the country in America that time. That's how I first played Kobe Bryant. Because when you're playing in Washington DC, you're playing in Maryland, you only play the players against the players that you know. But when they form the team, they do called DC United, and then the California team, and then all the Massachusetts team, all those teams from around the country, we're going to play, we're going to play in New Jersey, we play tournament, we mix in Massachusetts, we play tournament. That's how it's the best player in the world, in the, in the country. And that's how the first time I first saw Kobe Bryant at 14 years old. The ball was really flying in the air. Alan Iverson, I walk in the gym in Georgetown. First time I saw Alan Iverson, I just walk, I just walk into the gym. Next, I just saw it, just somebody just fly up there, dunk the ball, boom. I just try, I say, ah. Yeah, we're like 6-1. So who is this person? He said, Alan Iverson, just came out from jail. <laughs> Gangster guy, 6 1, the guy like scary, and attitude, bad, like crazy attitude. The guy just, the whole team was full to come and see our lives because he got into a fight, and the bar fight, you know, the game was uh, a place that was very racist. Virginia, they put, him, they put this young boy in the jail, in the in jail. He spent the night, he came out last summer, everybody was just waiting for our lives because he was, the best, he was the best high school basketball player and the best American football player in the state of Virginia. At the same time. So when he came that day, I never knew who he was. I just walked in, I was going to play somebody, I'm carrying my shower. Boom! Ah. I'm going to see what this guy did that day at the game. It was, it was incredible. So 
The trends that we can discover as we go along is unbelievable. You don't even know who you're going to see as you start this program. You don't even know who you have in your school. You don't see these kids walking around the school class. You just come to school by when I carry a girl boy just walking in. You never know what you are, what the next greatest player you have in your school. You don't know until you put programs like this in place. And what we're asking you, what we're telling you guys now, that oh, this Open Academy is for everybody. I want, to, I, want to, I want to stress that. It's in partnership with all the coaches that are coaching currently in high school, secondary school, or um, privately, or whatever it is. Huh? Okay. Academies or whatever it is. And let me explain what that means. It means that this facility, we are, what we're doing here is to create programs that will enable you to benefit from this facility. Meaning that the existing programs that OBN has, we are calling them, we're creating what we call the Coach Affiliate Program. Where if you come and say, okay, I have 10 kids that want to participate in OBN after school camp, you get, you bring them here, they pay, you get a commission. There's already a commission for that. We're going to give people 10%. But let me tell you where I learned this, this trick from, or this, this, this system. I found a company called Wakana.com. I don't know if you guys have Wakana. Wakana.com, when I started Wakana.com in 2007, there was nothing like online travel in Nigeria. Nothing didn't exist. I came back to Nigeria, I was stuck in the airport. That's how I met my, my wife that is here. I met her by mistake. You know, I came to Nigeria to go. I was going to play in Russia. I got to the airport. I came to get my visa. I was going to get my visa in the US. I came and got my visa. I was going to the airport. I got to the airport. They say I cannot fly through um, Frankfurt. But I had my team bought me the Lufthansa ticket. Then I had to the uh, a transit visa. So I was at the airport. I said, let me pay with my card for Turkish Airlines. I said, which other airline going to Russia? I said, I want to pay. They don't accept this card. Let me book a line, nothing. Ah, you know, I, had, I missed that flight. And I came back to town, went to Turkish Airlines, booked the ticket. I didn't have an account in Nigeria. So I had to now call my friend, my, my, my friend and partner. I said, I called and said, guy, come with me. Go to that one bank. He said, you had the money in that one bank. Pay, my, pay for the ticket for me, and I'll send you the money from my US account. It was that Palm Shopping Mall, that that Diamond Bank there, yeah. Palm Shopping Mall, that I went to pay for the tickets. And as I was paying for the tickets, that's how I saw this young fine woman that walked by. So I had to branch quickly at Gangia. No, that's how I met my wife. Okay. <laughs> 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 I, I accomplished two things. Like, yeah, uh, I'm going to close that door. I'm telling you guys. <laughs> I don't know my friends, I came back from Nigeria and that's how I, I moved from Nigeria. So basically, the point is that when I started that, that business, we're saying about distribution, partnerships, because we had the technology. But when you do technology, that's why you want to hold this thing by yourself. No. You want to open it up for different people. So there was a lady that was here, her name was Uchi, who was in a blue shirt. All of my, all of my partners, all my agents. That woman did all her travel from Wakana, but nobody knew. When she sees her customer, she will book, she will come and say, ah, give me what's the best price you have for London. Give her the price, we agree. Commission, she take her money, we take her money. The ticket is in her own company that nobody knew. You know what I'm telling you? So this affiliate program is very powerful. What I mean by that is that this is what we have built, is that we want to also partner with coaches. We have our own coaches that also give incentives to. But once a partner with coaches that say, go and get players. You know this player, you work in schools, you know your team, organize your program. We want to, so things we want to achieve. There's a summer league, there's a summer program, which is massive. The biggest part of the year is summer program. These kids are home. The players are going to decide whether they are traveling abroad or they are coming, or they are, or they are whatever they are. They want to engage them for two, two and a half months. The best thing to do now is that we want to launch a summer program, but we want to do it in partnership with the coaches. So when we launch the program, we're going to send you the proposals, the packages and everything like that. What we're asking you to do is to put together the players and you also get own incentive, but We'll do it in such a way that it's very, very beneficial for the coaches. And I'm talking about revenue. Lots actually talk. I'm talking about money. Everybody coming here is paying. Ask them. Ask them. Everybody's coming here is paying because we spent a lot of money to build this place. So nobody can come in and say, this place is not nice enough for them to be. Any parent that comes in, like, wow, the president is just shocked. Why is this? What kind of thing is this? But what we did it to make sure that when they come here, parents can come and sit down here. They work on their laptops, or when this gym is ready, they can come in here and do their gym, their kids are training. You know what I'm telling you? Their kids can have locker rooms. That's, 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 what I, that's what I experienced in America. I don't see anything why we can't have it here. So we are saying to you that we'll share with you all of this plan. Let's go to the email. So what we want there is constant communication. I want to elevate, I want to empower the coaches. 
I want Christians to be empowered. And I will say this very clearly. I'm not chastising anybody. I don't, I don't, I want us to look at, look at, look forward, not look backwards. A lot of coaches have been maligned in Nigeria. The coaches have not been given to coaches in Nigeria because of this lack of consistent programming, lack of infrastructure, you know, and these things have hurt the game tremendously. Hurt the game tremendously. This guy here lives in Minnesota. He's making millions of dollars. This guy makes millions of dollars. You know, this guy you just saw here now, his contract, I'm sure his contract is not only than seven, eight million dollars when he was coaching. A year. My coach in university, Coach, coach uh, Williams, was making $10 million a year. Then! <laughs> but you know what is happening in Nigeria? We have not built the industry. We have not built the industry. Are you telling me that when, play, when, when players come here, they want to play? This is what the coach is waiting for. They say, I don't know what's in day. Parents know what's in there now. They know that it's not only through education. They know, that, they know that these schools are placed. Let me tell you something. Now they know that school, they know that these schools are placed scam on them. Including me. <laughs> They're scamming us. Because when you tell my child, I'm going to go to class from 8 o'clock in the morning to 2 to 3 p.m. And after 3 p.m., I'm going to tell you go to lesson again. You're scamming me. Am I lying? It's a scam now. You try to collect from school fees, you want to collect more lesson fees, you want to collect another one. For what? How can my child sit down from class from morning, wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning, enter traffic, after 8 o'clock, 3 o'clock, my dad goes lecture again. What is it? What is it that is? <laughs> but you know why I do this one? Because they don't have the sports. They don't have it to engage them after 3 o'clock. Do you know what I'm telling you? Eh? They don't have it to engage them. They don't have the facilities. So I know what it, what it means. Players, I, I mean, this facility we have built here. When the when the when the seats are when the seats are, are there, it's gonna be a fun place. Food, drink, everything. You come, you have fun. Everybody's happy. The parents, it's, it's, it's yesterday a great place for parents to come and relax. Now and I want to want to hang out, want to say, ah, I can I saw this person, geez, everything. Everything will be available here. You go hang out. But sports is, is unbelievable. We go to an NBA game, it's an unbelievable experience. You go to a college basketball. My college basketball, you might try, I want to talk about where did I have the most fun? It was college basketball. Our uh, Maryland games were, were fire. When I played North Carolina, I played Duke, all these teams, man, people were sleeping outside for tickets. So we want to, we're not going to achieve all those things in one day, but we're going to start now. We're going to start having events. Every weekend we're playing games. Today we're going to have a game between our team and, uh, and uh, an all-star select team. The goal is to eventually have the summer program to share more details of you. I don't pick up too much time, we have to go out. Get this game going, but we're gonna have the summer program. We're gonna have the secondary school, high school league. We're gonna establish schools like Lagos Prep, Corona. So I'm talking to all your schools. So we want to share information with you so you can not only engage your school and say, we want to be part of this. This facility here, we talk to some of the coaches, ask me what time in practice. We have two courts that teams can practice. We'll talk about busing. So I'm gonna, how do we get here? We're gonna talk about busing. So after school, bus the kids here, they have their practice, they can go back to. So all of those things are part of what we we're going to be offering or engaging the schools with. But like I said, also what about scholarships? And also about people that cannot afford it. Now let's be honest. This lucky area here, VI Ikoi, this is the most affluent place in Nigeria. Right? A lot of kids are not going to be able to afford Even the ones that can afford it, their parents still want the scholarship for them. Well, those are the ones suffering. <laughs> yes, now why are you laughing? But it's true. When I got scholarship for my for University of Maryland, my, my dad was very happy. Education in America today, full scholarship, when you go to school, and most parents will send their kids to America, minimum of $30,000 a year. Minimum school fees. So that's, we're talking about four years, that's $120,000. No, no matter how much money you have, <laughs> you wouldn't want that kind of uh, benefits. So we're not only talking about rich or poor, everybody has problems. Eh? But like I said, the ones that, that have this, the elite talents, sign them early, we want us to create scholarship programs. But like the schools that I still have, the schools that, and let me tell you something. I tell school, I tell proprietors, I tell owners, I tell directors of programs. There's nothing. If I take you on the tour, how many of you have gone on the tour of the facility? Everyone see the facility? We have a studio here. So I'm going to talk about my wife because she's, I try to find that she's my wife. She's one of the best, I would say actually the best branding and marketing person in this country. I want to talk about all these things that I see here.
So I, I'm actually benefiting. Some people say, why are you doing your I'm actually, well, I'm the one pimping her. Not the one pimping me. I'm the one, I'm the one getting more from her. But I know that if I can hire an external company to pay to do this work, I know how much I will pay. You know what I'm telling you? But I'm getting this in-house. And what are we trying to do here is so this brand, OBN, want to resonate. You see the videos, you see the production, you see the merchandise, everything has to be world class. The reason why we all do the NBA today is because their branding is impeccable, it's second to none. Why do we know Premier League? Why do we know Bas um, what's it, the Spanish League? They are brand, look at their shirts, look at their jerseys, look at all those things that they wear. This is all part of the ecosystem. So they create. So you buy that Sons, that Sons t shirt now, I hope it's the real one. It's not the real one, even if it's fake one, somebody's <laughs> going to pay for it. You know how much they're selling it. You know what I'm telling you? Yeah. All those things are part of what's going to benefit the ecosystem. People that are making our jerseys for us are going to make money. People that are making our shoes, the press are coming and asking me for shoes. You have to create OBN shoes. All those things, you have to create them. Because you don't have a Nike right now in Nigeria saying we are part of Nigeria, we are really going to invest in Nigeria and sell Nike shoes and sell. No, you just see one or two Nike stores here, that's it, in Africa. So this is a part of the opportunities that we're looking at, and all of you will benefit from it. We're going to create programs for which is to benefit from whatever we sell that you sell through you, you benefit from it. And that's what the partnership I'm talking about. All year round. All year round. So guys, I um, don't know if you have any questions, but I'll take some questions. But your emails, your contact details, we're going to do this every month. Next month we're having coach, um, the former coach of uh, Atlanta Hawks. Please let me not forget his name. Lloyd Pierce. Lloyd Pierce. Thank you. Lloyd Pierce will be here. We will do the same thing for us next end of this uh, May. So every month we're going to have a coaching series. And I'm bringing these people to, to be able to have you guys see and hear from them about what's happening at the highest level of basketball. So that we can all aspire to get to that level. We want to feed Nigeria. I'm telling you, we are so talented. We are so blessed. We are producing more NBA players than any other country aside from the United States in this last NBA draft without any infrastructure. <laughs> that, is that, is that not crazy? Without any infrastructure, they all go to Europe, all the infrastructure they have, all the big, 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 big people that made NBA players as Nigeria did. So you can imagine what we do when we start really trying. Right? So I'm really, really excited about it. I'm really happy with the turnout. I'm, I'm hope I'm, thank you uh, if you want. Um, actually, I want to ask how you're going to involve schools from mainland, because most of the schools that come around here are from Thailand. Mm. And because of the distance, it's going to be kind of difficult. So I don't know how we're going to work around that. So this is where the weekend program becomes, it becomes very quick stuff, right? We're going to have to pay programs, pay for the ones in the mainland on a weekend, on, on a weekend, weekend uh, program. And like I said, we're working on busing. But like you said, this is going to cost money. We'll try our best to give the best deals that we can get. But um, this is going to cost a little bit of money. Um, but until we start getting this like sponsorship, because you know, the best thing we want to do is like, you know, without begging people for money, I'm not going to go and beg anybody for money. We want to create a sustainable business model here that is sustainable. Then if somebody wants to come and sponsor us, they want to sponsor OBN, uh, high school uh, tournament, these are the kind of things that will help us improve the service. But we're going to do everything we're doing here from a business model that is sustainable. People are paying for their camps, people are paying for their, and we're going to reinvest that money. Reinvest that money until we grow. As we grow, we can add more, add more. I'm telling you something about the NBA. The NBA, to me, <coughs> I have to say I'm very lucky to have made the NBA. Not, not just lucky, but blessed. The benefits I still even get today from the NBA are unbelievable. When I'm sitting here, I have a pension, I have medical, all my family, I have everything. I played, I stopped playing 2000. I stopped playing last game in NBA was 2005. So, what to create for Nigeria? Like I said, I'm going to bring my experience. I'm going to bring my network. I'm going to bring everything I have and give back to this game. And this game has been unbelievable to me, to my family. So, I don't know if I see me, I don't really want to get into discussion about the world of politics. Or I'm not interested in that one. All I'm interested in is that that child that is nine years old, that boy, that girl, they're going to be give a chance. Those coaches are going to give a chance to create a life, create a career out of this thing and live comfortably. That's what I'm, that's what I'm interested in. That girl, that boy, they're going to get a scholarship in five years. There was one day we say, ah, 
this girl, this boy, he came from OBN Academy. Do you know what that means? This coach now is talking about us in America. This coach you see now, they have the NBA coach school. He's going to tell them that he just had a conference call with coaches in Nigeria at OBN Academy. You don't know what's going to come out of that one. Nobody knows. One day we just get a call that, ah, somebody said they want to come out and do something in Nigeria. That's what we're going to do. You brought it. That's how we now, if somebody said, I want to sponsor coaches programs in Nigeria. Never know. Somebody just goes to one. They have, you know, they have money that is beyond what you can even imagine. You know what I mean? Those things that will call us money in Nigeria, this is not nothing for these guys. You know what I'm telling you? So they can say, ah, I want, to, I, want to, I want to be part of it. I want to enter Nigeria. Who is the platform? Who is the that, that's, how, that's why I want to also keep having these coaches saying, us and talking to us. We see that we are, we are, we are, we are serious. We are, we, are, we are determined to get better. Because they know us. Don't get it twisted. They know us. They know us. They know Akim Olajuwon. Mm -hmm. They know uh, Andre Gudala. They know Adebayo. They know uh, Miami Heat. They have six Nigerian players. Six Nigerian players. They know us. They exist in this one ball. Yeah. I hope there's a recognition or consideration for what was existing before. Like, let's say the high school system now. Probably we had the middle, mm -hmm. one or two competitions, non interstate. Which it was. Hope this will find a way to that's right of integrate so that everything exists and continuously improves each other. What can I tell you is that. I've said it one million times. Look at my coaches I know here. I've told you one million This question you're asking me, they have asked me on Super Sport. They asked me everything. What is your relationship with MBBF? What is your relationship with this one? What is your that one? I'm open. See this place? 24 7. Ask them. 24 7. We don't want to play that competition. Please feel free. Come and play. You know what I mean? We have enough space. We build this place to accommodate different programming. One of the coaches actually did that. How would two coaches, actually coach from Meadowhouse, how would coach, how would teams practice here? We have two side 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 courts, right? So two teams can be playing. Say we can say in the morning, eight o'clock to ten o'clock, Lagos Prep and Atlantic Hall practicing. Ten o'clock to twelve, uh, two more schools. Twelve to one, two, two more schools. Two, two, two. Milo want to do that, do that competition. When we open here, doing that summer, summer hoops and they want to find space. Ah, ah. Floor there. Uh, we play our own. We play the army. Mix everything together. You know what I'm telling you? It's not, see, everything is about scheduling. Nothing, nothing can clash. You know what I'm telling you? Nothing can. I want to look like what is your schedule? What is our schedule? You know what I'm telling you? If you say you want to play your own in the morning, we'll play all in the afternoon. You know what I'm saying? You want to play all in the evening, you play all in the morning. All this is scheduling. This is a facility, this is a, this is a gym. Don't you, we're not closing the place. You want it till midnight, say, I want to play. I told them, we can play this till midnight. You know what I'm telling you? Weekends. Do you have any words? No, no, I think like I, I actually felt that there are the middle competition that they basically just move around looking for facilities to actually host it, like national stadium. Yes. Do you have anything like their own? No, no, yeah. they don't. I think the, the, the schedule is what I spoke about, and that everybody knows. So, the, so, so, the, so, so, yeah, okay. What I'm saying is that most scheduling, like I said, programming, programming is critical. Programming. Yeah. As I'm telling you, different things can run at different times. There's no problem. Milo calls today that they want to use that place. Please feel free. Don't negotiate. Yeah. Yes, I'm telling you. Negotiate, yeah. Anyway. Um, well, for me, being a friend of the family, it's, it's a great inspiration. Uh, I'm just coming back to the question you just said. Um, I mean, I've had so many talks about so many things. Uh, I think we should really start telling ourselves the truth. You open up, Obian is an ecosystem on this one, right? Yeah. If we had existing uh, competitions and all that, can we truly tell ourselves that they are sustainable? I feel this is an opportunity for us to actually now put our resources and our ideas together to build something that is sustainable. We, open, we, don't, we are open, but the question is, are those other people who want to come in, are they open? Are they consistent? Are, you know, do, are they going to give us here the privileges and the opportunities that we're looking for 
So I feel this is a great opportunity for you know, whether you're a private coach, you are coaching a school and all, to come together and say, you know what, with this facility, with this plants, let's see how we can make this ecosystem a lot more sustainable for everybody. But I believe one thing, if it's something that benefits everybody in this room, we'll have a bigger crowd than this. We'll have much more funding than this. So for me, I just feel, let's just push, let's just be in this vehicle and do whatever, do everything that it takes to help us get to that destination that we're all looking for. I feel what has happened in the past is in the past. Things that have been going on in the past, let them be in the past. But now, moving forward, we should just build on what we're seeing now. Because at the end of, end of the day, this is the legacy. What we are putting together now, this gathering now, this meeting, this, these are things that we never had the opportunity to, to see. I mean, you know, Monday is here and all. So all these coaches that are here, many of us, we've known ourselves from way back. So we should just focus on moving forward, planning forward, and doing it together. That's what I have to say. Thank you for that, Thank you. 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 Uh, I want I want you guys to understand as a word I call there's a word I always use called progression in life. Progression. Like I said, we didn't call you guys here is for us to build what is what is sustainable. And we we'll need to grow. The MBA grows every year, unfailingly. You gotta check the MBA salary cap. Every year it grows. From what? From Better programming, better demand, better revenue, better incentive. All this does not happen by mistake. They signed better TV deals. They signed. So, what I'm telling you is that the issue about revenue generation, the issue about being consistent, the issue about being sustainable, that is what's going to make attract other people like, like partners, um, sponsors, what will come and invest in this ecosystem. Because they have to know that if I put one naira into this thing for five years, it's going to go for that five years that I put my one naira in. Exactly. Nobody wants to put money, and I keep telling people, nobody wants to put money in anything that say, oh, next year, we don't know who is going to be in charge, and who's going to run it, and who's going to be real, what me and this person agree. Maybe this person today is, is the, the end of this organization, or that whatever organization like running that program. And the next day, they say, ah, this person will not be there again. Why am I going to commit my money? Because I'm telling you, every dollar, every naira, anybody puts in anything, they want benefit. It's not free money. If a uh, Milo puts money into a uh, basket, they want to what? What are they trying to They try to reach out to the young kids so they can buy their what? Their products. So when they put money and then the next year you don't tell them you're not going to run Milo or you're going to tell story, they start to back out. That's why it's important to build your own facility. When you build this facility, you know that we control that. We don't say we don't go to a national stadium. Or we go to somewhere else that we cannot control. Say, we want to use that place. We cannot use it or whatever story comes about. Huh? What are you talking about? 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 If you didn't buy it, you don't have a problem. What are you talking about? So, what we're saying, I think, you know what? What, what we're saying that they also, everybody, what I'm saying that, with my own experience, everybody has to be uplifted. Right? Everybody, even the, even those on those existing programs have to be uplifted. Yeah. Believe me, people that Nestle doesn't want to hear story about yes, forget about they want to they want to reach but they have to look for CSR, but they want the CSR to go to be beneficial to them. They don't want to say that oh, give money to this one next year, power power, they don't want to do this one next year, they don't be and do nobody wants to hear that. So if that the people that organize of the of the middle completion want to say okay, we're going to be consistent, they want to use. That is not, that's why I said we are ready, we are open to everybody as long as we can fit them into the program. I don't believe any reason why we cannot. All right, can I get an OBN cheer from everyone? One, two, three, go! Oh, yeah. Awesome.